Here I am going to my local Yamaha, Aprilia, Moto Guzzi, Vespa and Piaggio dealer, Arnold's Motorcycles, who have kindly agreed to let me test ride the Yamaha XSR 900. This stylish and powerful bike has all the features you'd expect from a modern day machine, as well as the performance to back it up. From its retro style design to its cutting edge technology, the XSR 900 is the perfect combination of style and performance. Whether you're looking for a daily ride or a weekend adventure, the XSR 900 will take you wherever you want to go. Well, at least that's what it says on the tin. Stay with me while we go over the specifications of this motorcycle and draw my own conclusions as to whether this motorcycle is what it says on the tin. So, where do we start first? Let's start with how it sounds and some images of what it looks like. The Yamaha XS R900 is jam-packed full of technology, yet it is the image of that retro 80s delta frame motorcycle along the lines of the RD series. Starting at the front, the round headlight is a nod to the past in style, but the full LED lights are modern and a small sign of the technology to be revealed as you move around to sit on the motorcycle. You look down on a full colour TFT screen, which is where you can start to control the built-in functionality of an R1-derived 6-axis inertia measurement control, which provides the following. Lean sensitive traction control, slide control system, front wheel lift control, anti-wheelie to you and me, and the modes can be adjusted for the engine in four modes, and includes traction control adjustment as well. Then moving on to the fully adjustable suspension, upside down front forks, and link type rear suspension means this should be adjustable to more or less everyone's satisfaction and needs and it provides 140mm of ground clearance hopefully plenty for our potholes. Then there are the Brembo brakes to give confidence inspiring braking with dual 298mm front discs and a 245mm rear brake and ABS fitted as standard. All this with lightweight wheels to reduce unsprung mass and all attached to the latest Delta Brox frame, adding a longer swing arm to provide a more stable riding experience, all tuned for performance and precision handling. It's important how much Yamaha have made this bike accessible for all riders with a seat height of just 810mm and a wet weight with a full fuel tank of just 193kg. This should make for easier manoeuvring on and off the bike. The fuel tank holds 14 litres and has an estimated 56 miles per gallon, in imperial gallons that is, which if my maths is right should give you a range of about 146 miles. The motorcycle is reasonably wide at 860mm at its widest point, I suspect this has something to do with the bar end mirrors, which were completely vibration free on my test ride. This motorcycle is available with three engine sizes, 125cc, 700cc and 900cc, so if the styling is what you like then there are plenty of engine choices. So what powers this mammoth beast? The 900cc is a CP3 triple cylinder 890cc producing 119 PS or 117 brake horsepower at 10,000 RPM and 93 newton meters of torque at just 7,000 RPM. This is a fuel injected Euro 5 compliant engine. Power is not going to be an issue with this engine for commuting, long, longer trips, or in fact solo journeys, or even the racetrack. The fuel consumption might be an issue unless you like posing at the fuel pump. The engine is connected via a six speed gearbox and final chain drive. The 0 to 60 times of about 3 seconds and around 6.3 seconds to 100 miles an hour makes this a seriously quick motorcycle and has a top speed of 145 miles an hour. The engine is very smooth and willing and will easily do the national speed limit in second gear. With the wet roads trying to rev the engine out was not really possible and without a racetrack legally I don't think I could. The engine pulls well even low down the rev range and in the wrong gear as it has plenty of low down power. The engine is connected to a six speed gearbox with an up and down quick shifter and a feather like clutch for stopping and starting, and as I said, it is a chain driven motorcycle. The three cylinders 
do make a lovely noise, but I still prefer the street twin sound personally. But the exhaust is hidden beneath the motorcycle, so it may be a design choice for weight and performance over audio performance. The riding experience from the direct steering XSR900 is more like that of a naked race bike. Certainly the forward leaning position is not a familiar position for myself. Legs not fully tucked up and very comfortable on my ride. The seat is however on the hard side. The seat is hard and a bit of a design feature in itself. Unlike the flat one from the 2017 model and the 700cc model that's currently available. It's designed to make you feel like you're in the bike rather than on it. I didn't feel like the back of the seat got in my way at all. And the low height made putting my feet down easy at 5 feet and 10 inches. The suspension is starting to make me think that the X-Max doesn't have any at all. And it's just the seat absorbing the bumps. This bike is super smooth and deals with the rough road surfaces with ease. I didn't find any potholes thankfully, but it did glide over the rough bits that I did find. This bike is seriously quick enough to handle any road with ease, and with this engine probably need a track day to see the best it can deliver. The feeling at all speeds is very smooth, and there is little vibration. The engine has four modes, so you can have a more aggressive or softer response with the throttle. I found mode 2 to be very enjoyable. In traffic or slow speeds, the bike will hurt your wrists and palms of your hands, but it's one way to get stronger wrists, right? This is due to the leaning forward position. It's not something I'm used to. Maybe the younger riders would love this position. And certainly if you're on a sportier bike to start off with, moving to this will reduce some of the pain in your wrists if that's why you're swapping. So moving on to the controls. All the controls look and feel like quality switches, or like some of the past switches used. My only issue with my thick winter gloves was getting the left indicator on, but thinner gloves, that would not be a problem. This bike has so much technology to keep you from losing control, but none of that obviously cutting when I was riding it. Traction control, ABS, anti-wheelie, the bike really will put a smile on your face and it's not hard to ride. You can even turn down the traction controls, not the dealer wanted me to turn it that off at all. The full colour display is incredibly easy to read and the main information is where you need it, speed, rev counter, engine mode. Let's be honest, in the time I have with the bike, I'd have never learned where all the settings were. The settings are all adjusted on the left hand bar cluster, which seems a little busy for my liking, but it's not something I'm used to. But I'm sure once you learn where everything is, it will be just fine. The up and down quick shifter is seamless when I remembered to use it. It's a bit like having an automatic, but you control when it shifts gear. So only need the clutch lever starting and stopping the motorcycle. It's designed that dropping down gears hard, the engine will rev match automatically so you don't lock up that back wheel. This allows for even faster acceleration for us novice racers as we don't have to let the clutch in or out. I didn't take a pillion on the ride, not allowed, plus it always changes the bike's handling, but the rear seat is quite a bit higher up and the pillion pegs are somewhat, hmm, different. When tucked away, they are not obvious. But here, take a look at both out and in positions. What do you think? So let's go over the pros and cons of the Yamaha XSR900 with the pros first. It's got plenty of power, you'll never be short of power with this motorcycle. It would be great for shorter riders, it's got a well proven engine, there are no expensive fairings so should be lower insurance and less likelihood of damage if you drop it. It's got a low weight for the size of the engine, so quite surprisingly that it weighs not a lot more than the new Honda Hornet. With the modern technology it's also unlikely to break down and leave you stranded at the side of the road. So onto the cons. The fuel tank for me was probably too small. A couple more litres maybe? So that gives the other issue. The range is also a little short. But that's because I prefer a range that's over 150 miles. Closer to 200 would be nice. For day to day riding on the roads, I think this has got too much power. 115 brake horsepower and 0 to 60 times in 3 seconds and um, maybe that's a little too fast. It has no storage, no weather protection, it's probably going to be costly to insure and only has two colour schemes. That's my big complaint about Yamaha at the moment. Their colour schemes are one or two colours and usually they're quite boring but the blue and gold looks amazing. Sorry, I don't like the black one.
There are a variety of accessories you can buy directly from Yamaha and other third parties. So on to the conclusion. As I've said before, this is about using a bike to commute daily, not to take around a racetrack as fast as possible. So here's my conclusion based on this being used as a daily motorcycle to commute back and forth to work. If you want this amount of power, I can't personally see where you could use it on a UK road legally. You are going to be able to leave most vehicles standing at the lights and 30 mile an hour will come in the blink of an eye. Keeping that amount of power in check, filtering or in heavy traffic could become tiring, even though the controls are super smooth. The bike being a naked retro calf racer has no weather protection or storage to speak of. Storage could be added, as with most motorcycles, at extra cost. And maybe it might look a bit silly, not sure. The range, if you're doing say 50 mile round trips, may mean you're stopping frequently to fill up once or twice a week and the refill would be reasonably cheap as it has a small 14 litre tank. I don't see the XSR 900 as a commuter motorcycle myself and if I had to go and get one I would get the blue one with gold wheels. I don't personally think the 900 is the bike I would buy I would have liked a 300cc version in the range. The 700cc is fast enough and has the same engine from the MT-07 which is only 10 miles an hour slower at the top end at 135 miles per hour and slightly lighter at 188 kilograms and slightly lower as well but it doesn't come with all the, the same styling or all the same technology on board. I feel the XSR900 is a more track oriented and fun day out motorcycle than a commuting tool. And I'd like to thank Arnold's Motorcycles of Burton on Trent again for letting me take this motorcycle out for a test ride. Please visit their website if you're interested in this bike or pop into the showroom and have a look around. They're a great, great bunch of lads and always very knowledgeable and very helpful. If this has been at all useful, please like and drop me a comment. Or any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching. Look what's parked up as I pull through. Till next time.